What's up guys, Heeking here, bringing you another manga review on last week's and this week's Boku no Hero chapters, I believe, 353 and 354. So this is going to be a double reaction slash review for the uh, My Hero Academia chapters because I missed one and now I'm going to be reading the next one as well. So yeah, get your money's worth <laughs> as, as the saying goes. So straight up, we go down, we see the cover page that we got here with Shota here, white, you know, the ice and the fire hair on each side, flames and that, etc, etc. Devote every last bit of yourself. So let me put that up so I can see clearly this way. Good, good, good. Starting off impressively, as it were. So we get the aftermath of the Dobby fight. This chapter is pretty much 353. It's pretty much a setup chapter. It gives us a, conclu a conclusion to the Dobby fight, and it gives us a good idea of what other characters are doing at this precise moment. Now we don't see where Deku is. We don't see uh, Froppy or UVT fight in Toga, but we do get uh, some other characters, and then we get a bit of more, you know, just a slight development now of the situation at hand. So, we, we, we got Darby, obviously, where we ended last chapter with Shota freezing the crap out of him. We got Burning there, and she's like, secured. Darby has been secured, and yeah, Shota subdues Toya, so, yeah. So we get all the characters that are there, all the heroes, that ones that, are, you know, especially the sidekicks who got burned protecting Shota, uh, as, as Toya was just, like, as Darby was just burning through them, but they're alive, they're well. And one of the one of the heroes, I don't know who her name is. She look is I don't I could be wrong, and this could be Mo, Momo, but I don't think it I don't think it is though. It was like she's got a specific design, right? So I don't think this is Momo, maybe. But uh, aha, fighting against his own brother must have been so distressing. Even so, he managed to win. Maybe it is Momo. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, she she if it is, she looks way different here. That kid, he beat the accursed wielder of blue flames, Shota. The, the way Shota looks here, it's like he's got angel wings coming out of his back, like like the ice or fire, whatever it is. It's like from the back, it's just like spraced out. Do you know what I mean? So it's uh, it's. I I don't know if that's maybe steam, or whatever, or whatever. But it looks like he's got wings in the back, which is kind of cool. If it's if that's kind of like what Horogoshi's like uh, doing with the symbolism, that's pretty cool. So we're cutting to them fighting uh, uh, the Nemo's as well, you know, the Nemo's are there, there's this one Nemo's getting punched literally in the brain by someone, uh, I don't know who, follow up, follow up on Shota's attack, all that remains is this fat ass, uh, so yeah, they got this one Nemo there, he's got spikes coming out of it and they're just trying to beat this dude. And he's like, throw everything we've got at him. We've got a num we've got a numbers advantage. So there's yeah, there's there's clearly a lot of heroes there, and they're trying to overwhelm this one and Nomu basically. And it's like we've got we've got a lucky draw here. We didn't have to face any of the Tartarus escapees such as Kinado and Gartsley. Ghastly, so yeah, we gotta make sure to share our luck with our colleagues. This poor uh has to have to face the have to face the escapees. So we're cutting back, we're, so we're cutting to All Might in the air control room. The news of Dobby's defeat made its way to Kamino to, 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 to Mord, the center of operations where Tusu, Tusukachi, you know, uh, the, the police officer, All Might's friend, and the others were stationed. And yeah, All Might just having this sort of happy breakdown, if you will, like, like that, they're like that sort of disbelief moment to, yes, you did it, like, young to, you know, Tony Rita, Tony Rocky, you just like. That look, that look, that that feeling like he did it, he did it, you know, he won, he like showed to one, he actually did it, yes. And it's like you got the you got the officer, like the detective, like although Midor Midoriya has been sent to a different location, we've made a good start so far. You have to be the one to tell them all, mate. So yeah, uh, now it's a case of opening the morale now. Like like things started off bad, especially with Deku basically being teleported to the wrong place. Uh, not not his fault. Uh, remember, Toga snatched him away from there, and now he has to race back. But this is the first stage where the heroes have won. They've won the first fight, which was against Darby. So yeah, that fight seems to be over. And we're cutting to the Jaku Hospital ruins in front of the uh, Gigor uh, Gigantu uh, uh, Machina containment facility. The announcement was made across every battlefield. So yeah, every battlefield is now hearing how you know Shota has defeated Darby. And we're seeing like I'm, I'm believing I, I'm assuming I could be very wrong here. These could be the villains that may be uh, spinner led, like the mutants. I could be very wrong here. It could be. I mean, it does say the announcement was made. You know, it's at the uh, 
hospital rooms with a Giggle, Gantino, Makino, whatever containment facility is. So maybe this is where they're fighting thingy, uh, you know, Giga, but I, Giga, Giga, <laughs> but I don't see him. Uh, can we just call him Guy again for sure? Because it's way too hard for me to pronounce his name. But we got, uh, we, saw, we see some familiar heroes here. We've got our, uh, you know, pink alien queen here, <laughs> uh, uh, smiling, you know, Todoroki did his best. And we got, uh, what's his name, Minoru, the little dude there, and some other characters, I think. I think there could be characters from. Uh, no, I don't think these are from class. I'm, I'm getting confused. I think I was gonna say, are these characters from class B maybe? But I think one of them is the sellotape dude, you know. But uh, again, these are characters whose names I don't really know. We got Mountain Lady just smashing people, and she's like, he was always struggling with his quirk, so I was worried about him. Looks like he's got some skill. I like, I like his flair. I was surprised attack was perfectly planned. So what are these guys doing here? So these are the villains. Like, what is going on here? And you got this one villain dude with like this uh, sort of skull mask and tube going down. Uh, I think he's got his radio on and he's like, you rats made it look like you were on your last legs, when in reality you had hundreds of heroes on the wings spread throughout the whole area. From the looks of it, you even anticipated the simultaneous deployment of this detached force. However, your sacrifice will be in vain. The time of liberation is upon us. Those that speak lies th those that speak lies will be run down into the ground, just like that UA teacher. So yeah, we... I think this is the dude who killed uh, Midnight, basically. So yeah, we, we I don't even know what his name is. I mean, he could he could be that Kinada dude or Ghastly dude, whatever. I don't know. Maybe that's someone else. Like I'm confusing with. It's been it's been ages since I've seen the anime and that. So you know, I, I'm not really familiar with. It. But yeah, Mina, Mina, his his that dude talking. So now it's like, oh, that's that's the guy who killed killed you know our teacher. And then you got uh, what's his name, Red Riot popping in is like, you know, I'm sorry I'm late. And Mina's like, Red Riot, the area's been properly evacuated, Pinky. Everyone, let's do this. So you got Mina and uh, Red Riot there. And if I'm correct, since they're at the Giga containment facility, the assumption is that G Giga is there as well. But it, it looks like what what's being set up here is this fight between Mina and uh, Red Riot against the dude who killed uh, Midnight, whose name we don't even know, who's wearing a bloody mask. I mean, it would be surprising if it's someone we do recognize, but I don't think that's going to be the case. But it looks like these guys are going to get the justice and vengeance against uh, Midnight's killers, it seems. So I guess that's the setup for this fight, this one in particular. You know, Todoroki, you know, Red Riot, you know, he's continued to talk. Todoroki showed us how manly he really was. Now it's time to do our part. So, yeah. Then we cut into the uh, Takobo National Stadium. Man, they really need to put like names here so we know who each of the heroes are. So we got we got uh, we got the dude who eats the sweets to get strong, and there's the one with the tail there. And then we got uh, the saddle, saddle tape dude there as well. You know, when this battle is done and dusted, we ought to congratulate him properly, despite the fact he told us the gap between Darby and himself was far too big. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and then we cut into the sky with the UN school building. That's in the sky, obviously. And there's, you can see the damage Shigaraki is doing. I mean, it's, it looks like it is hitting the main building as well, the main H building as well. But, uh, yeah, it's still holding in place. Bakugo still alive. You know, of course he won that Todoroki. Getting happy there. So those guys are still going. And then we're cutting back down to the uh, car parking lot where we were left with Fat Gum and uh, Ayoma and compatibility, you know, and they're stuck with some villains, the leftovers that weren't pulled through the pores, so compatibility, huh? So that cage from before was only meant to allow for both forces to be split up, and those people were matched according to their quirks. So what's the deal with this particular location then? I wonder what spurred you all to remain here. Is it trust or just blind faith? It is what you cannot see that you must fear, the very layer that covers this planet. So I don't know about this dude, it looks like, I'm trying to see, What's his design here? A bunch of clothes, maybe carpets? Uh, he looks sort of like a ninja, really, but uh, yeah, he's, he's up in what looks to be flowers, it seems. Like a whole bunch of flowers have just like grown throughout this parking lot. I mean, the last time we saw it, it was practically empty, but now there's like a bunch of flowers, just like big ass flowers. I'm talking about like leaves, like clover flowers, whatever it looks like for me. And you got fat gum there, just like, the hell are you talking about? You an alien or something? This planet? And then this dude just continues, I'm waiting out your options. Until now, there have been no men who deceived him and lived to tell the tale. You shall be no exception. So yeah, this guy's pretty much like, yo, Ayo, he's specifically talking to Ayoma at this point. You know, you betrayed him, you're going to die. So that's pretty much the gist of this. As the dictator failed his duties, he did not get a second chance. As all for one's late, latest assassin, let me show you how the job should be done. So yeah, I was right. This guy, this guy, the reason he looks like a jailbreaker. So yeah, we got Tartarus Jailbreaker, Kinar, uh, Kun, 
Kanida. So this is one of the guys that was just mentioned uh, along with Ghastly. We don't know who Ghastly is. Maybe we do. I, I don't remember who he is, but Kanida. Yeah, this dude escaped from Tartarus. It looks like he's got some sort of flower plant ability. Uh, I don't know what it refers to. Assos fables in where beasts and birds uh, fought. The bat would choose whatever side won. At the end, he was shunned by both sides. Interesting. Are you still aiming for the best of both worlds, or have you made your choice? Are you my you gone? You are nothing but the bat stuck between birds and beasts, right? So he's, that's a reference to that fable story about the bat and but, but the what, what the birds and beasts and the bat choosing the winning side. And uh, are you my response with mercy? Uh, so then we're cut into um, uh, what's his name, my, uh, microphone Mike, and he's like. Where is he at? It, lo it, it looks like he's. Uh, I think. I think. Yeah, he's. He's at the. Uh, he's at the main headquarters, basically. I'm pretty sure he's at the main headquarters, which is a bit weird because uh, he's saying Shoda has to feed Dobby. You know, he's. You know, he's calling for. He's using his ability to shout that out, and then we're cut into our octopus fellow dude. Uh, you know, the tentacles and that up against the cruel face of destiny. Todoroki still faced it head on and stood his ground. And we finally see where Spinner is. Like we, we never got a setup for where this dude was fighting and who he's fighting, but he seems to be somewhere. And um, he, he's fighting our tentacle friend here, and he's giant. He's giant. Look, he, 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 what's the best way to describe this? He's Godzilla, basically. He's, he's Godzilla with a sword, with, with with a bunch of freaking swords. Uh, Derby lost. Impossible. This is just propaganda to boost morale. He couldn't have. So. Uh, this is insane. I'm going to stop it here, guys. So, yeah, uh, we're cutting to uh, the Spinner fight, finally. Like, I mean, how many chapters has it been? And we finally see where Spinner is at. And he's cutting through build. You know, he's, he's just cut through, like, a staircase, like an open staircase. They're clearly outside. Tentacle just saves someone. He's getting him out of the way from the hit. And, yeah, he's massive. Like, what the hell? How did he get so big? And, yeah, he's in utter disbelief that Darby has lost. And uh, we see this flashback where Spinner is with all for one. And Darby is leaving. He's like, no chance in hell. And Darby turns to him and he's like, he has everything. A purpose in life. A goal. Power. And what do I have in comparison to him? And we see all for one touching Spinner. So clearly all for one gave him something. And Spinner just loses it. He's like, there's absolutely, he's shouting this out. There's absolutely no way that someone with his tenacity would lose. Nothing. Get Koragiri back from his captors. Destroy the status quo. So, yeah, it looks like Spinner is leading uh, the uh, Animorph army, basically, to save uh, Koragiri from his prison. So these, this is where these guys are at. And they've sent Tentacle to, to stop him. Uh, I don't think that's going to be enough. I think these guys are going to break through. I mean, it looks like a big, overwhelming force. Plus, Spinner is now massive. So... Do it for me on Shigaraki's sake. Tear down everything that, that oppressed and pr prosecuted us. And Tentacle's like, Todoroki, I'm proud that I get to be in the same class as you. So a lot of the side characters basically get in their moments to shine here. And we're cutting back to the uh, Kamino Ward, I believe. I, I think this is where the Statue of All Might was put in as well. As well. So yeah, this is definitely where... This is well, back to where Shota and the Derby fight was. We're seeing Ido approach uh, uh, Shota and he's like, I stole your engines, didn't I? I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? And Ida's just like the shoulders on the ground, just like scratched up. Oh, sorry. You know the shoulder on the ground, just 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 on his just on his on his ass basically. And then and then Ida coming in and crunching down next to him, holding him, giving him like a little arm around the around the neck. Like why are you apologizing, dude? You got the other heroes like celebrating basically. And it's like why uh, why is he still alive? So you've got the heroes checking Darby, and they're looking at Darby. We get this close up shot of Darby inside his chest, and it's glowing. So, I don't know if this is a hint that this is about to go wrong, that Darby is going to break free, or if this is a hint that basically the fire is keeping him alive and not uh, having him freeze to death, basically, essentially. So, um, because, yeah, Shota wasn't going to kill Darby, I think, um, which is which is nice, I guess, but, uh, you know, if it was this plan, did he know Darby would use whatever fire ability he has left to, or was this, you know, how does this work? So, I don't know if this is a foreshadowing that Darby is going to come back into the fight, and this is going to go all wrong. Like, it's going to melt the ice and he's going to become more powerful. Or if this is a case of, it's just an indication of, this is why he's alive. Because his heart's still pumping. There's a bit of, you know, he's still got whatever warmth he's got. He's using it to keep himself alive from the sub zero temperatures. And then we cut to the Guggen Mountain Resort. Unexpectedly, the news reaches even further. So we're cut into the uh, all for one fight now. So we see Endovar, and there's all for one floating in here. And he's like, What's with that face? Is that relief? Sorrow? And then we've got the Hawks, and he's like, Don't listen to him, Endovar. Here it comes. 
not even looking not even looking Toya in the eyes and just letting little Shota deal with it was your plan, right? And now you're going to justify your actions by say, saying something like a hero has a lot to protect. He's already become the verbal assault. So Hox knows what uh, Awful One's game is. That's why you can't win, number one. And we get this final panel of Awful One, and he's got his hand out, and various abilities start popping out of his fingers, which is really creepy. You got you got one that looks like it's mud or water. You got one where it's like a face or whatever popping out, like the flesh ripping apart and a face coming out. Another one's got like it's like wind, I think. Another one, I think it's either ice or fire. And another one's got those spikes that came out of his shoulders in that one fight when he had that he had with All Might. He still remains calm as ever. So yeah, it looks like we're cutting to the. Uh, we're kind of to the awful one fight at this point, which is great. But yeah, in terms of set up chapter, we got an idea of where some of the other characters are now. You know, we've got Mina and Red Riot there fighting Midnight's Killer and potentially Geek Guy again. We've got a uh, tentacle dude fighting with Spinner and, and Spinner, and he's an uh, army of essentially trying to rescue Cora Giri. What's going to happen there? I don't know. Uh, and yeah, I think those were the main set of points really. Everyone else, you know, we got a we got one panel with Bakugo, Bakugo showcasing that he's still alive, that fight is still going on, they're still fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it really. Darby's still alive. And now we're going cut into the um, All For One versus End of Our Hawks and all the other hero fights. So yeah, um, let's do this guys, let's do this. Let's just get right into that chapter guys. So this was a decent chapter. It was it was a decent chapter for the most part. It gave us a good idea uh, or the scale of where all the various fights are now. I think I think we've seen all the main players now. We know where all the main players are. So the side characters got their moments to sort of shine. Uh, hopefully they get better moments to shine. Like we actually see them in action and using their abilities to try and stop these guys. I do think Spinner is gonna break through. And he's going to try and probably succeed in rescuing Koragiri. But uh, what I definitely want to see is him being confronted by Spinner. I definitely want to see him and fight Spinner. Though a lot of people are theorizing that maybe Stain is going to end up coming to the Kamino War to confront uh, Idan uh, and, and maybe Darby as well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to see Idan uh, doing something because he didn't do anything during the Derby fight. I was kind of hoping that maybe he would run so fast that he would end up creating like some sort of like uh, a tornado vortex or whatever to sort of spread the flames around or contain them within within Derby. We didn't get anything cool like that. Uh, obviously, you know, the power scale, I don't think he's that powerful enough to do something like that. But, but it would have been cool to see. But I'm hoping Idan gets his... Uh, I might even say his name on Idan gets his moment to shine like... I, I want to see him. I want to see do. So I want to see him do something like uh, something cool. So you know, give him something to do. Have him maybe go into the spinner fight, maybe. So, but I definitely want to see Stain involved. Like, I mean, yeah, I definitely want to see Spain. I mean, Stain, Stain was a spinner. I think would be poetic since Spinner looks so much up to you know Stain now and his ideology. But that's sort of changed now because now he's very, very much uh, on Shigaraki's uh, mythology now. Like he's he's sort of uh, ideology now. So you know, he's following that. But uh. What does that mean for what, what, for what he thought of Stain's like? Uh, is Stain going to come and be like, yo, you betrayed what I fought for, for what I stand for, etc, etc. So that's kind of what I want to see develop, hopefully. So I'm hoping we see that. I'm hoping we get that Stain was a spin-off fight. I really do. But yeah, overall decent chapter. And we're going to move on to the next. Which is, uh, so this chapter was called Endeavor. And the next chapter is called Here. So 354, Here. And here we are. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked that uh, chapter. So please remember to do, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, give a few seconds. And uh, remember to uh, share as well if you want. Uh, to click the bell down below. Comment if you will. And yeah, a moment of silence. And we're moving on to 354. Let's do this, guys. So guys, yeah, here we go. Second part of this re review reaction. So yeah, I actually haven't read this chapter properly yet. Um, so this is going to be the first time I'm going to actually be going through this, which is great. Like, you get to actually see me proper, proper, proper react first time uh, as I go through it. So this might be a longer part, actually. Uh, so yeah, All For One has a weak, clear weak spot, which is his helmet. I think we all know his helmet is his weak spot. You know, just do what Batman did in, to Bane in Dark Knight Rises. Just just go for the helmet, smash it, smash it in. So we got Hawks talking. So yeah, they're talking about his weakness, which is pretty obvious. As you've probably already guessed, that mask has some uh, some kind of li life support bit built into it. During his escape from Tartarus, he remained hooked up to life support machines and even took them with him in the footage stain, pro uh, stain in the footage stain provided 
it's clear that his body can't survive on its own. Stain provided footage. Now, I don't remember if we saw that or not, but uh, the fact that Stain provided on the footage, man, that's, that speaks volumes about his character. Like, this dude does not agree with All for One and his actions. And the fact that he gave that footage to, to the heroes is like, yeah, yeah, like... So, uh, either this is a mistranslation or this is a setup for Stain to actually enter this war and, and help the heroes out, hopefully. Um... We're cut into best genius, but I'm sure he knows that better than anyone else. And, uh, yeah, Hawk, Hawk's not fully recovered. I mean, just look at him. I mean, he's, he's got a little bird, like, bird, like, bird wings, man. Like, not even the tall ones they used to have. Normally, overwhelming him with numbers would be the best course of action. You know, you don't say. But we also have to take his quirk stealing into account. We can't afford to have Air O for one suck the quirks out of our already limited task force. You yeah, like, that's a thing to consider, isn't it? That is a thing to consider, like... I mean, he gave Spinner an ability like how, like just like that. Now I'm okay. I mean, he's freaking Godzilla, like Godzilla Junior. So we're seeing Hawks and Endeavor go right in. Um, Hawks's wings do actually look a bit longer now, uh, so it looks like he has recovered. He's got his wing swords out, feather swords. We'll pack the maximum amount of power into the smallest group possible and run him into the ground. So you know, I guess square quality over quantity, as it were. And yeah, it, all for one, just, just shooting off those uh, wind uh, wind powers. Don't give me the cold shoulder. End of our, you know, Hulk screaming at him, and end of us going in, and uh, Hell Curtain. You got the flames clashing with the winds, like they, these. I don't know if it's if it's if it's if it's a physical power that he's using. It looks like he's losing like sharp uh, moon rings or some kind. I'm assuming those are, are meant to represent wind, perhaps like wind slices. I could be wrong. You got bits of fl flame, whatever, like bullets shooting out of the, the the explosion that just formed at all for one and all for one. I think one of them hits him for his helmet, actually trying to catch me off guard again. Or maybe this is all for one uh, realizing ah he's trying to shoot those bullets, flame bullets through my helmet. And then you got uh, you got Hawks coming up from behind, but uh, all for one he's not even looking at him, but he uses some sort of shield from one of his fingers and like spreads and it goes forming a shield behind him. And you need to call yourself fast. Not even Recovery Girl could help you uh, fully restore your wings. It was only with those prosthetic ones that you were able to reach this speed. A real pain sometimes, isn't it? So, Hawks is using prosthetics, basically. Oh, that's sad. So, he couldn't he couldn't re re recover then. So, yeah, he's not at his most powerful then. And then you got Endeavor coming in with a big-ass flame punch, basically, at all for one. In order to protect the people fighting down there from that giant shockwave quirk he used to ravage Camino, we need to deal with him in close quarters combat. But if he has so much laser finger on us, we're done for. So, this is a very interesting situation. They have to be able to hit, knock this dude and get him close so he doesn't use his massive shockwave ability to basically keep him bay. It's all very similar to Thanos, basically, in the Avengers, where it's like he's about to snap his fingers off the glove and they're trying everything they can to stop him from using the glove, from using the power glove at every a chance that they get so it's kind of situation is very similar to that but at the same time if all for one touches them or hits them with any of these abilities they're done that's how strong he is even if he's basically a dude using life support to stay alive at this point but yeah you've got end of our company with burning fist uh and and all for one just like i don't know what what he's doing like he's got one arm like that what is that like that like that what's going on and he's blocking the attack and uh, his flames are leaking through my pressurized flame curtain. I can't reflect this with impact recall. On top of that, Hawks is ready to shut down any at attempt at countering attacking. What's wrong, Hawks? So, yeah, yeah, 0 for 1 realizes he's having trouble here, but he's like, uh, yeah, 0 for 1 is using, he's trying to do psych psychology here to beat these guys, it seems. It seems like uh, you're having a little trouble coordinating your soul. Is Endeavor feeling a bit off today? So yeah, he's trying to get through Endeavor's head. He's trying to get through Hawk's head. And Endeavor, you know, Hawk, Endeavor's like, don't let up, Hawks. The damage is piling up. He's super regeneration card keep up. So yeah, it seems they are damaging all for one. But uh, he's damaging him in other ways. Uh, and yeah, we, can, we get this big sort of spread panel here of the various fights going on. All silhouettes, so we can't really see who's who. Take a good look at the ground and devour. Everyone is giving it their all to make sure the operation succeeds. Everyone from pro heroes to students is fully focused on the battle in front of them. So yeah, we do have some members of class uh, B. Uh, yeah, class class B in the battlefield here. We've got the mushroom girl fighting there. So why are you the only one whose mind is adrift? Mm. Oh, for one, going for the psychological mental attacks. Your masterpiece took care of that little failed experiment in your stead, didn't he? 
shouldn't you be, be a bit happier? So this is very similar to what All For One tried to do with All Might during the Camino fight, where he told him certain uh, facts to throw him off guard, to destroy him, to break his will. So he's trying to do that as well, and he's like, and it was just like, shut it. And Hawks is like, don't humor his jabs. Remember what happened to All Might in Camino? Yeah, so it's, it's definitely 100% the same thing. He's going for that psychological warfare attack to break his spirit. And uh, your awful one's like, the truth is, I've always been fascinated by your twisted lust for power, Endeavor. You see, I can't resist planting seeds wherever I stumble upon f fertile soil. Why do you think that little Toya's body was never found? So yeah, he's pretty much telling him, yo, I'm the one that took your kid. I'm the reason he's alive, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, Hawks like to think that he still had such an awful ace up his sleeve. And we're cut into this. We're cut into Endeavor in the hospital, I think. Someone who lives only for atonement can't harden his heart like I can. Like, I knew it. Like, I, I knew it. So, yeah, we're getting Hawks. He's thinking back to his parents when he left them, when he abandoned them. In his current state, it would have been impossible for Endeavor to come out on top against Darby. I need to stand by his side. And, yeah, uh, Hawks is going... He's going to Endeavor to try and help him. And he's like, your only duty now is defeating all for one. Keep your cool and... Uh, over, and yeah, Endeavor's losing. He's like, all for one. Got you. What's going on here? Got you. Got who? Oh no, all for one. Yeah, Endeavor lost his cool there. He lost his concentration. He's getting angry. Allowed himself to get angry. And this gave all for one the chance to come in with one of those spiked drilling abilities. And he's basically hit him in the side. He's drilled for his side. It's lo It looks like uh, the, the, hand ha the hand has completely formed into sort of like a spiky mouth, basically. A drill spiky mouth and it's taking a, ch a little chunk of him from the side so he's hit him blood he's bleeding out hawks just you know and you know shouting his name and all for one turning is like do you think you can avoid my blast at this distance mr nuggets replacement mr nuggets and he's and, and hawks is racing he's like no way in hell so i'll at least carry end of our son into prominence burn range and and then you got oh and then we get the big moment here. We get the big uh, cliffhanger of this chapter here with uh, Tokoyama and Jiro coming in to save the day. And uh, Tokoyama using Dark Shadow to fly. And you got Jiro on top of Tokoyama and Dark Shadow hanging on uh, onto like uh, the shirt, whatever. And they're coming in and she's just used her shot. You know, Jiro has used her shockwave ability, heartbeat wall basically to, I don't know, to shoot at, to shoot at all for one. Hawk sees them, all for one sees them, Jiro's like, hey, easy there, stop shaking so much, I'm not used to flying at all, and I'm barely hanging on, okay, and Tokiyama's like, you know, Takiyama, is it Takiyama, Tokiyama, uh, to Toka, Toka, to Toka Sukuyama, Toka Sukuyomi, uh, Toka Suku, that's a long name, man, Toka Sukuyomi, and he's like, hold on, hold tight, earphone jack, and by the way, I'd appreciate it if you could stop moving your butt so much, I can't focus, shut up, you idiot, <laughs> And Hawk's just like seeing these two, Toka Sukuyomi and that girl from Class A, stay away, this is no place for you, you'll die. So two students from Class A, who have no business being here, who were not told to come here, have just flown in to save the day. And like, I know I'm no Endeavor, but you know I can fight alongside you. So, and then, you know, all for one, just flying, floating in there, so many, but, you know, flies buzzing around. It reminds me of those comics I used to read. In those stories, side characters like you were only news to show how strong the Demon Lord truly was. And Ajiro's there. That's the kind of line better said after victory, don't you think? Or for one. So yeah, she seems happy and pleased. And that's how the chapter ends. Yeah. Well, let me pause it here and go into my detailed or thoughts, if you will. So yeah, that was the chapter. That was 300, uh, 354. So pretty good bloody fight. Uh, most of it is really uh, all for one doing the tet, you know, the cliche uh, typical thing that we would expect him to do which is trying to get into his opponent's uh, mind essentially and verbally try and beat them and then catch them off guard and hit them and he succeeded with Endeavor. Not enough to put him out of the fight it seems but he has hurt him and Hawks as well trying his best to stay at Endeavor's side understanding his, you know, his physical mind knowing what is going to happen, what all for one is playing at, and knowing that he has to stay at his side to keep him, to cox him, to keep on going, if you will, like like the guardian angel that he essentially is. And as it seems like all hope is lost, you've got Jiro and Toka Toka Sukuyomi just flying in there to save the day, which is unexpected. You know, I wouldn't have expected these two characters specifically to get involved into the all for one fight, but here they are. 
And yeah, there seems to be a bit of foreshadowing there as well at the end with uh, uh, All For One saying, you know, like how, how in manga the side characters like this usually do die. So is someone going to die? Are one of the A1 students going to die? I don't know. Uh, I, I hope not. I mean, to be fair, we haven't really lost any main characters or main supports with the exception of uh, uh, Midnight and uh, Night Eye. And that was a character that was introduced in that arc specifically. So... You know, maybe we're not going to lose anyone. Or maybe Hawks is going to give his life. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, I hope I hope, I, I, I hope someone does die. I hope the stakes are raised in such a way where it's like someone dies, but they deliver some sort of wound or hit that will help and aid the heroes into the fight going, you know, continuing on. But uh, definitely a decent chapter. Uh, you know, it's nice that we finally get this fight with all for one. It's a nice way of, of spreading these fights around, like getting bits and pieces. So we, we've got, we we're, already, we're already done with the Derby one. Maybe there's more to it. Don't know. Uh, maybe Stain's gonna come in and be like, "Yo, I'm gonna kill Darby now." Like, uh, you know, move out of the way. <laughs> imagine if, imagine if that happened. I don't think it will, but um, yeah, we know now these ch chapters what everyone is at this point. So we got a good idea. So now it's just a case of continuing these fights and seeing how it develops, how the other characters develop during these fights and concluding them essentially. But yeah, overall decent chapter. I enjoyed reading this. And I can't wait for this to get animated so we can fully, fully see it and appreciate it for what it is. Uh, hopefully they do it justice when we do get, uh, I'm assuming this is going to be season 7, maybe? Uh, maybe not. Who knows? But overall, pretty good. Pretty good. I liked it. And yeah, that's, that's my thoughts, guys. That's my thoughts. Uh, overall, good chapter. Anyway, guys, as always, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, click that down, bell down below, share if you want, comment down below if you want, let me know what you think. And yeah, I can't wait for, I'm assuming there's a chapter next week, it doesn't look like we're on a break, so yeah, I can't wait for next week. Uh, 340, 3.45, let me just double check this, isn't it free? It, it's, it should be free, 354, but the chapters are mistranslation saying 345 at the bottom of it, weird. Uh... Hmm, weird. That's definitely a spelling error there. Overall, very good chapter. Can't wait. Can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, hope you liked it. Anyway, guys, take care, and I shall see you when I shall see you.